Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Intentional Excellence Podcast. This is your host, Charles Max Wood, and this week I'm going to be talking a little bit about connecting with your past. It's something that I've been thinking about a little bit lately, um, and, and I really have some, some thoughts about, um, about connecting with your past and really what that means, as well as, I don't know... I, I guess I'll just jump in and, and talk about it. I, I spend a lot of time just looking forward and, you know, trying to see how I can move ahead with my business and with my life and with who I am. And it, it's interesting that, well, anyway, last week my mission president, now for those of you who aren't familiar with um, LDS or Mormon jargon, let, let me explain really quickly. Um... In the LDS Church, um, and and I'm going to use that term. That that's usually what we prefer to be uh, known by, as opposed to Mormons, though we don't find the term offensive. Anyway, um, so in the LDS Church, young men uh, at the age of 19 or 20, you know, around that that age, I think you can go all the way up to 25, are encouraged to uh, go and serve a two-year mission where they go and they proselyte and, and share the, the message of the LDS Church and of Jesus Christ with, with people all over the world. And my particular mission, I was called, um, and, and call is like calling, called. Um, they, they called me to go to the Italy Padova mission. Um, and so if, if you're not familiar with Italy's geography, um, as, far, as well as where Padova is. Basically, if you think about it as, uh, you know, everything in the northeast uh, of Italy, um, all the way west to about uh, Verona or Brescia, and all the way down south uh, to just past uh, Florence um, was in my mission. And so I, I served in a few cities. Um, you know, you move around from city to city. Anyway, each... Each mission has a president, and uh, that that president directs the missionary work in that mission, and uh, you know serves as our uh, religious leader, so to speak, uh, for the missionaries anyway for for those two years. And uh, you know we're assigned out to cities, and we work with the people there, and we work with the church units there, and you know we we help train the leadership, and we help teach the teach new people and bring them into the church, and. Anyway, it's it's a very very rewarding and um, valuable experience for uh, for the the men that and women who go and serve. Um, young women are also invited to serve. They can serve after they're twenty one. Um, the women are generally encouraged to marry if they have the opportunity, but you know aren't discouraged necessarily from serving a mission if if that's what they wish to do. Anyway, so um, the mission president. Um, my mission president is now a general authority in the church. Uh, the mission presidents usually serve for about three years. And uh, as a general authority, he has been assigned to go and work in Ghana. Um, and so he is going to be leaving here in a, in a couple of weeks. And so we wanted to see us all because he's going to be there for a while. And usually there are reunions or get-togethers, you know, every six months around the church's general conference where he'd get to see some of us. And, you know, he's not going to be around for it, so he thought he'd invite us all out. Um, and they've been back for 10 years. I've been back for about 10 and a half years. I came home about six months before they did. And he, he and his wife, and, uh, you know, and they had two sons out there with them at the time. Anyway, so I, uh, I'm i explaining this so that I can go into what went on and so that you can kind of explain what went, what, what happened. Um, but anyway, so he invited everybody out to his house. Uh, he lives up in Salt Lake City. And, uh, you know, everybody brought a little bit of food. And, you know, we, we all kind of caught up. I mean, there were there were people there that I literally hadn't seen for 10 years. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of them live around here. So <laughs> there's really no reason other than the fact that I didn't know where they were. Um, but anyway, so so it's been about 10 years uh, since I'd seen a lot of these uh, these missionaries from my mission and had seen my mission president. Um, and so it was it was really nice to catch up and see a lot of these people. Uh, my mission president is somebody that I really highly respect. And so, um, like I said, you know, it was really nice to see him, but um, it really kind of brought back 
um, it, it's not just a memory. It, the, you know, it, it kind of revived part of the person that I was when I was on my mission and really made me think about uh, my past and, and, you know, where I've been and what I've learned. And I, I usually just, I don't think about that. I don't, I don't think about high school. I don't think about my childhood. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think deeply about these things and, and, and think about where, what I learned and where I've been. And, you know, some of the lessons, I guess I keep learning the hard way, but you know, it, it really brings back that, that person of who you are and, and what's important, and you know, really forced me to kind of realign some of my priorities. Um, there's a part of me that I ignore uh, in a lot of cases that I really oughtn't ignore, and it, it's that person that you know really has that deep conviction that uh, the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints or the LDS Church, you know, really is uh, led by God and. Not not just that, but you know that that person that has that deep conviction that drives every part of his life, and you know I don't I don't do that as much as I should, and and I realize that, and I recognize that, you know there are certain ways that I need to grow that I've really not been doing. I mean I've gotten out of the habit of reading my scriptures regularly, and, and praying regularly, and doing all of the other things that I'm supposed to do. I go to church every week and. I, you know, I do all of the other things that I'm supposed to be doing, and I, I know that it's right, but it, you know, I, I don't do the day-to-day -day things. I don't do the important day-to-day um, -day practices that, that keep me on the right path. And it, it really, really just drove that home and, and made, made me really realize that it's not just important where I'm going, and it's not just important what I'm learning, but it's important who I am and who I'm becoming. And, and so, you know, it really, you know, kind of made me think about that. And, you know, I thought about some of the other parts of my life, you know, with my childhood and, and, and my, you know, I'm, I'm pretty ornery adult and, you know, just things like that. And, you know, where, where I grew up and, and the, and the people that influenced my life. And, you know, I had a dream about it last night. It was really weird, but you know, where we were out there lighting off fireworks and anyway, it, it was quite a bizarre dream but anyway um it was it was interesting to to kind of connect with that part of my childhood i i grew up in orem utah um which is a, a city just north of provo utah if you know where that is it's about 40 minutes south of salt lake city and i went before i was 12 we lived on this street that i, I literally could tell you um who most of the people were that lived on that street. It's not that ca that way anymore. I think a lot of those people have moved away. But, you know, I remember we had this this bunch of kids that, that was kind of this little gang that ran around the neighborhood. And, you know, we, we would play games together. And, you know, we would, you know, just run up and down the street. And, you know, the, the older kids would light off fireworks. And, you know, you know, I remember one, one time uh, one of the neighbors he uh he took an apple from one of the trees you know carved out the core stuck a whole bunch of firecrackers in it lit them and you know and made a mess and you know things like that you know i, I have these memories of uh, climbing over the fences and driving the neighbors crazy you know and, and some of the neighbor kids that i i hung out with and you know got to spend time with and some of the dumb things we did and some of the wrong things we did and some of the fun things we did and you know, one of the neighbors had a fort built in their backyard and, you know, we, we would go and hang out in there and then the, the fort was too small for everybody. So we actually built another fort in one of the other neighbor's backyard. And so we would hang out in, you know, the couple of forts and, <laughs> you know, just things like that. And, you know, realizing how important these people are and, and how how impactful they've been on my life, you know, and, and to recognize that my, my parents have been such a, a, a terrific influence on my life and, and to recognize what a wonderful person my wife is and, and, and how important it is that I spend time with my kids and, and things like that. And, you know, and I just, it really, it really made me realize what's important and, <coughs> and what I'm spending my time on and what I'm not spending my time on. And, you know, I realize now too that uh, I could I could take a 
I could take a half hour or so and, uh, you know, read my scriptures every day or, you know, and pray and, and do that stuff. You know, I could, I could take a few minutes and, you know, and make the other things that I'm working on a priority and, and make them important. So I, I don't know that I have anything more to share than that, but that, that's kind of what I've been thinking about lately. And, and I hope that, that you can kind of think back. You know, think back when you had a, a, a real mission, you know, a real purpose in your life, something that was driving you to do whatever it was that you you knew that you needed to do. And, you know, find a way to, to make that work. Uh, find a way to bring that out in your life again and 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 make the important things important and and focus on the things that, that really should be a priority. And if, if you can do that, and you can find a way to make that work, then then you're going to be light years ahead and and really uh, come to know you know some of the things that you may have forgotten. And uh, that's about all I have. Um, I do want to mention that if you want to get a hold of me, you can. My my email is chuck at teachmetocode.com. My phone number is. Well, I'm not going to list my phone number unless you want to hire me. If you want to hire me, I'm a freelance Ruby developer. Uh, I build websites for people. Uh, my phone number is 801-367-6164. Um, feel free to uh, contact me about this or anything else. And, uh, you know, you can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is CMaxW. And I have a couple of other websites uh, or podcasts that I do. There's the Rails Coach podcast where I focus on uh, stuff for new Ruby on Rails developers. You can find that at railscoach.com. You can also... Uh, I discuss with a few other guys every week uh, stuff related to Ruby and programming on rubyrogues.com. That's R-U-B-Y-R-O-G-U-E-S uh, dot com. And you can find interesting discussions there on that stuff. Um, I also have some tutorials and just my regular thoughts on programming at teachmetocode.com. And you can go check that out. Um, other than that, I hope you have a great week. I apologize for not recording last week. I wasn't feeling well. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can catch up next week and I'll have something maybe a little deeper to talk about. Um, other than that, have a great one and uh, we'll see you later.